Hello and welcome to tutorial 147 and I was asked by somebody uh, looking at the website why their strategy seemed to do reasonably well when looking sidebar back testing and intrabar order generation were turned off and performance changed quite a bit when they were switched on. So what I've done in this tutorial, we're just going to look at three charts and one of those I've got intrabar order generation and calculations switched off and look inside bar back testing switched off. That's the first chart, which is indicated by I made it a one minute chart. Then on the second chart, which is a two minute chart, what I've got is the intrabar order generation and calculation switched on and the look inside bar back testing switched off. And then Finally, the third chart, which is a three minute, and I've just made that one, two, three, so we can distinguish the two. What I've got is the intrabar order generation and calculation switched on and the look inside bar back testing switch switched on as well. And what I've done, I've applied the same program to each of these charts, which, uh, charts, which is a simple strategy based on uh, moving average crossovers. And I've got the equivalent indicator applied to the chart as well. So you can see what's going on there. So let me just show you the strategy. And you can see that uh, it's uh, quite straightforward. We've just got two lengths and a price. And uh, what we're doing is calculating the moving averages using the average FC calculation. Moving average one crosses above moving average two, then buy and expire at market. If moving average one crosses below moving average two, then sell short next bar at market. And then I've got a, a very, uh, I've got a, a print statement which essentially shows you the values of the moving averages, shows you the uh, when crossovers occur, and then also plots the market position. But what I've done is I'm accessing that using various conditions here, which I'm going to comment out as we go through the program. So for example, we're going to be starting with the first chart, which was a one minute chart. And we're going to be looking first of all at historic bars. So what I'm going to do is remove that. So that's, uh, that's going to be applied. And as I mentioned, we've got or maybe I didn't mention, but we've got clear print logs. So each time we'll get the uh, the fresh printed information. But let me just show you before we do that, the setup for the strategy. So we're looking at this chart at the moment and we're going to go format strategies and then the uh, intrabar order generation calculation and look inside bar back testing. They can be found by clicking on the strategy. And then if we want the intrabar order generation calculation, we click on format. Then we click on the calculation tab. And if you wanted to uh, switch that on, you'd click this little option here, but we're not. So that's off at the moment. And then the other thing is the look inside bar back testing or use look inside bar back testing. If we wanted to use that, we'd click there. And that is found in the properties for all. So the first chart we're looking at is this one minute chart. And you can see again, look inside bar back testing is off and intrabar order generation and calculation is off as well. So let's look at the print statement. And you'll notice, and we're looking at historic bars here, that as the uh, intrabar order generation and calculation would imply the program is just running once per bar. You can see here, because it's a minute bar, we're getting one each minute. And if the condition becomes true, then the order goes in the next bar. So if we zoom in to look at a specific trade, perhaps this one here, you'll see that the uh, the crossover is confirmed on this bar, calculating at the end of the bar, and then the order to buy occurs the next bar. So now let's, uh, let's go back to the program. And what we're going to do is I'm going to comment out the, the, the uh, historic thing, and I'm going to um, uncomment the real time bar information. So let's verify the program, go back to the chart. And uh, what we're waiting for now is the completion of a real time bar. So if we just wait uh, a few seconds, we should see that. But essentially what's happening is the same thing that's happening in historic bars. We wait until the last tick of the bar to do the calculation. 
and uh, at the same time we print that information and then if there were to be a crossover then the uh, the trade would be next bar so let's just uh, wait and i might just stop the video and uh, move to the next uh, few real-time bars so here we can see the 648 bar and now we have the 649 bar and you'll see that we actually have a crossover here we've got the movie moving average one has crossed below moving average two and that means if we look at the chart that we've now issued an order on the next bar which is the 650 bar okay so that's chart number one let's look at chart number two and this is the two minute chart and let's change the program so we're just looking at the historic bars of uh, the two minute chart now in this case the uh, use look inside bar back testing is still off but now we've changed the intrabar order generation and calculation to be on so let's just have a look at the uh, historic bars and you'll see now for each bar we've actually got four data points now the problem with this is the uh, trade station guesses the route that we go through those data points so there's four obviously open and close we know where they are but there's a high and the low now which comes first the high or the low and it does that by working out the closeness of those to the open and the close and it might be wrong so that's one of the reasons why a program might perform differently in uh, using this setting so let's look this uh, with the real-time information it's going to comment that out and we're going to go to real time and what we'll now see is that for that for that bar the 654 bar we're getting all the information all the ticks that are actually happening on the chart and if the um, situation occurred where we did get across within the bar then the way we've got it set up it would enter the next tick rather than the next bar so that is the second setup and now let's look at the third and uh, so we're going to look at uh, chart number three and that is the one where we have both the options set to true in other words both look inside bar back testing and the uh, intrabar order so that's uh, number three let's just first of all look at the historic bars so let's just open the third chart now the first thing I should do is just go and show you the settings for the strategy so we're going to go format strategies for this one we're going to click on properties for all and you'll see here as I say we've got this set up now there are various options and what I've done in this case we're, we're going to use 20 seconds so we've got three minute bars 20 seconds and what we're going to see is that for historic data we're going to have 37 data points and that is because we have uh, three per bar three minute bars that's um, times three that's nine but for each of those data points we also have the um, open high low close situation that we had before and then we repeat the final tick that's where we get the, the 37 so in this way our back test is going to be a little bit or more accurate but not as accurate as if we had the look inside bar back testing set to the one tick level of course the problem then is that uh, the back testing is going to take a lot longer to complete now let's look at the other option which is to the uh, the real-time printout it's going to comment out that and look at the real time and now you'll see that for every uh, tick we're getting the information potted here so there's going to be a lot more than uh, 37 data points for a particular bar probably so in other words the for, for real-time trades the uh, chart 2 and chart 3 in terms of the settings uh, are not going to be any different although of course we've got a two minute and a three minute so that will make a difference in this case but if they were uh, set up exactly the same the real time would be the same but the uh, the back testing would be different so i hope that might be useful to you and if you had any further questions or anything i could explain a little bit better then uh, please let me know thank you